Hello, I'm Mark Weber. I'm curator here at the United States Navy Memorial, and uh, we're pleased to have you all here for another in our Authors on Deck book series. Most of these events happen at noontime, but some of our high-profile ones like this we do in the evening. And uh, just check our website for information, and we can get you on our mailing list. Some of the ones we have coming up on June 4th is part of our celebrations of the 70th anniversary of the Battle of Midway. We'll have a wreath-laying ceremony at 9 o'clock in the morning with the Chief of Naval Operations and honored Midway veterans. And then at uh, noon, we will have a new book by Elliot Carlson, Joe Rochefort's War, The Odyssey of the Codebreaker Who Outwitted Yamamoto at Midway. A great book. It's won a number of awards. Really interesting topic. And it's a fantastic day uh, to come down here to the Navy Memorial and see what we're all about. And then on June 11th, we'll have a new book by distinguished author Stanley Weintraub, FDR's Final Victory, The Remarkable World War II Presidential Campaign. He's done a number of books on FDR and his presidency, and uh, this one should be a, a nice addition to that body of work. On July 19th, we'll have Arctic Mission, 90 degrees north by airship and submarine. It's a new Naval Institute press book by William Altoff about a post-World War II uh, Navy expedition using submarines and airships to go to the North Pole. And on August 3rd, in honor of the Coast Guard's birthday, we'll have a new book by Tom Ostrom, The United States Coast Guard and National Defense. And again, those programs are all at noon here at the Navy Memorial. So uh, as you all know and have been trying to get the book tonight, Marcus's new book by Little Brown Publishers is Service, A Navy Seal at War. It was written with James Horn Fisher. And uh, we regret that we ran out of books tonight. Again, uh, if you were not able to get one, we do have some book plates, and Marcus could sign one for you after the talk. Marcus Luttrell is a native of Huntsville, Texas. He joined the Navy in 1999, and after becoming a Navy SEAL in 2002, served in many dangerous special operations assignments around the world. After serving two tours in Iraq, he was deployed to Afghanistan in the spring of 2005. For his actions during Operation Red Wings, Petty Officer First Class Luttrell was awarded the Navy Cross for Combat Heroism in 2006 by President George W. Bush. After recovering from his wounds, he served a second tour in Iraq and received his discharge from the Navy in June 2007. He is the author of the 2007 best-selling New York Times book, Lone Survivor, and a very popular speaker, and we can see that by the great turnout tonight. In 2010, to honor his comrades from Operation Red Wings, he established the Lone Survivor Foundation, dedicated to honoring and remembering American warriors by providing unique education, rehabilitation, recovery, and wellness opportunities to U.S. Armed Forces service members and their families. Please join me in welcoming Marcus Luttrell to the Navy Memorial. Please sit down. All right. Thank you all for coming out for my first signing of service. Uh, that was a pretty good intro. Are there any questions? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know where you go from there. Now, I, I guess we could take a little time and, and, and talk about um, the book service, kind of where it came from, the idea behind it, and then uh, where we're going with it, and then maybe take some questions. Is that cool? It's kind of a small crowd. I'm sure there's something burning in the back of y'all's heads that you want to get out, but uh, if not, then we'll just cut it at that. All right? <laughs> All right. Uh, like the gentleman said, Finished up Afghanistan. I was in the hospital for, for a while, having surgeries, kind of, you know, putting Humpty Dumpty back together again, if you will. Uh, they, they, they didn't kill me out there, but they did a pretty good job of, of banging me up. You know, I, I, uh, it took me a long time to uh, recuperate good and, uh, well enough to where I could uh, redeploy. And that was the biggest thing that kind of was weighing on my mind is the fact that, you know, I was still an active duty frogman and active duty frogmen go to war. That's just the way it is. And the fact that I had to come off the line for so long to get patched up was really bothering me. You know, it's, 
it's one of those things. If there's any country boys in here, you know what I'm talking about. You, you know, you get your butt kicked, you, you patch up, then you go back in for more, right? And that's, that's kind of where I was standing. You know, I had I'd gotten beat up pretty bad. I'd lost my teammates, and that was, that was another thing that was weighing real heavy on me. I, I, uh, I, I use the term in, in the book, and I, I've talked about it a couple times today, as revenge, you know, the reason to go back. There's a few things in the military that we really don't deal in. It's kind of call it the three R's, revenge, uh, robbery, and rape. You know, we don't mess around with that. However, revenge is a powerful motivator. You know, it will get you up and get you moving and, and to places that, that you think you won't go. And, and that's why I used it. You know, I was sitting around thinking of, of, of certain things. And, and when I got to that point about, you know, the revenge part, it, it, it fired me up. You know, I really got, I got into it. So I harness that, that kind of energy, if you will, to get back on the line. And truth be told, I probably wasn't ready. You know, I shouldn't have gone back over. It really it cost me, but I did, nevertheless. And I remember when I went back over, I was scared to death. You know, I don't know if I'm supposed to be saying that as a Navy SEAL, but that's the truth. You know, I, I'm sure there's some combat vets in here. You know what I'm talking about. I, I, uh, I didn't know how it was gonna, how it was going to play out. And the worst part about it, when I platooned back up and I went back over, I was just supposed to be in a logistics role. I was supposed to be on the computer typing up mission sets, this, that, and the other. Well, something happened. One of the chiefs uh, went to go do something else, so I got bumped up to, to the chief of the platoon, and, and that's, that's operational, you know, combat. So I was just like, oh, whoa, you know, I don't know if I'm ready for this. But we went out, and I remember the first time we got shot at, I think I actually froze for about two or three seconds. And... Um, I, all I remember was the fact that I, I hope my guys don't see this, you know, because that's another thing about fear is that, you know, if you're in a leadership position, you know, I'm sure your guys know that you're, that you're afraid, but you really can't say that. You know, you, you, can't, you can't let on that you're having problems with this, and I was, you know, but I, I put on a pretty good game face, and three seconds went by, and then that next bullet zipped past my head, and then I, it was all back to me. It fell back into me like, you know pouring water out of a pitcher, so to speak. I, I, I just, I got that energy back and then I was ready. So I hit the ground running and operated pretty good for about three months, you know, in and out. We were in Ramadi in the Al Ambar in 06, 07. If anybody knows about that, it was absolute hell on earth if anybody was there. So it was right before the surge and we were, it was tough. I remember thinking that I had never seen anything like that, you know, how bad it was. And uh, I was also thinking, I was like, you know, maybe it's one of good idea to come back here. You know, uh, you know, all that stuff kind of rolls through your head. But I played the game for about three months, like I said, and then on a particular operation, I was up on the stairwell, fell off the stairwell, and busted my knees up, my back, you know, was done again, and then I was out. You know, pretty much the guys were having to carry me around wherever I went. If I sat down longer than 20 minutes, they'd have to pick me up. And I was constantly in the doc's office on the machines and, doing everything I could to, to get back up and, and go back at it. But it just wasn't, it wasn't in the cards. And I remember thinking when I walked into the uh, platoon space with my, my platoon commander and, my, and the senior chief in there, when they sat me down and told me that I was coming off the line, uh, I, I remember thinking that, that hit me like a ton of bricks. I, I, I actually felt betrayed, you know, and, and hurt and and kind of like a, you know, like a coward or whatever it was, it was all kind of rolling through my head at, all at the same time because I was, a, I'm, you know, I'm a Navy SEAL, I'm a gunfighter. That's what I do for a living. That's what I was born to do for a living, and that's what I do. And when someone tells you that you can't do what you were born to do, imagine that. I mean, I'm sure there's people in here, you know what I'm talking about. You know for a fact. I mean, there's millions of people out in this world that, do, that go to work every day and do something that they, that they just do it to do it. It's not what they really were meant to do. Well, I knew what I was meant to do, and I followed that dream. And when someone told me that I couldn't do it anymore, man, it was like hitting a brick wall, you know, at a million miles an hour. It totally brought me down. Not that I'm incompetent or that I don't know how to roll with the punches and, and figure something out, because I do. You know, I figured it out, how to, how to go on with life. But it's always in the back of my head, every day, from the time I wake up to the time I go to bed, the fact that I'm, I'm not a SEAL anymore. And, it, it, you know... It, it, some days are harder than others, but it, uh, you know, I, it's tough. And I remember I wasn't married while I was in the SEAL teams. I was married to the SEAL teams. You know, that was my thing. You know, I got young kids coming up to me all the time. That I, I kind of mentor them, like, whatever you do, don't, don't try and get married while you're in the teams because you're married to the teams. Everything goes by the wayside when you do this job. 
And so I lived and breathed it. You know, obviously, I, I'm married now. I, I met a, a wonderful woman who pretty much saved my life. And 